All right, we're going to try to continue with this one um, with the amount of time that we have left. Is it five after this class? Yeah, last class was yeah. 10 after. This one's five after. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, there's no way we're going to finish this whole thing, but at least we'll get, hopefully we'll get like two examples finished, and that'll take us to a good spot. So, here it is. Example two. This time you're going to have to graph it. On the other one that we just, the last one that we just did, I gave you the graph and you had to tell, right, what the domain was and all that kind of thing, all right? So on this one, they're going to give it, they're going to give you a bunch of stuff and you're going to have to graph it. Very similar to what we've been doing. I don't think it's really much different. And it also says at the end, state the domain and range. They ask that a lot, all right? So make sure you understand what it's asking for when they ask for the domain and range. Domain is along the x-axis, the range is along the y-axis. So here we go. It says graph. They say a whole bunch more. Graph the piecewise function, but I'm just going to say graph. And again, they put f of x. That just replaces what? Correct. <coughs> y is the answer. So uh, they say graph this. This kind of, the very first thing that we did on this lesson, it's kind of like this right here. All right, so we're going to do three different ones. So there's one of them. That's why I put it way up here. And then here's another one. We're going to graph uh, y equals x plus 1. But then again, they put some restrictions on the x, on the domain. OK, so there's the restrictions. What does this mean? It means x is what? Give me one word, just a regular old word. x is something. Between, right. It just means x is between negative 5 and negative 2. This one means x is between negative 2 and 1, right? The or equal part means you're going to circle it in, okay? And if it just says less than, it means it's going to be an open circle at that spot. And let's do one more. Negative x plus 4. And again, our restriction is x is between 1 and 4. And this does include the 1 and the 4. So it's or equal to 1 and 4. All right. Uh, let me grab this graph and put it right here. OK. You want to do these in different colors like we did the other day? Green? Okay. Second one, what? Black. Orange. Yeah, black would be pretty difficult. Orange. Yeah, I don't use orange very much, do I? Yellow. Oh, heard yellow first. Okay, here we go. So uh, let's do this one first. So it says f of x equals negative 3, or just y equals negative 3. Right off the bat, without any restrictions, what do you think that looks like? Y equals negative 3. It's what kind of a line? Just Y equals. Yeah, it's a horizontal line. When it's just Y equals a number and there's no X involved in it, okay, that means the X is 0X, correct? Which means it's a zero slope. What kind of a line has a zero slope? Horizontal line, okay? So when it's just Y equals negative 3, it's a horizontal line that goes through what? The Y axis at negative 3. But can we include that point right there? Can I put a dot there? No, because what's my domain restricted to? All the numbers between what? Negative 5 and negative 2. And at negative 2, it's open, right? That's 2, 3, 4, 5 right there. And at 5, it's what? It's closed. But it's still a horizontal line, isn't it? So I'm just going to make a horizontal line from there to there. And there we go. That's the green one. All right. If it was just f of x equals negative three and no restrictions, what would be the difference? It would just be doing. It would do what? Nobody. If there was no restriction. The line would keep on going forever, right? You put arrows. It would be a line. This is actually not a line, right? It's got endpoints to it. Well, this really doesn't have an endpoint to it, though, does it? It gets super, super, super close to here, but it never touches. But this one does touch right there, and it stops. Bang right there. Okay? All right, let's do the orange one. 
x plus one. So if I was gonna do that, what would it look like if I didn't have any restrictions? I'd have a y-intercept at what? One, okay, and then the slope would be one, one over one, correct? And it would be a line that just keeps on going like this. But we are restricted. What are we restric restricted between? Negative two and one on the x-axis. So I can only go from negative two to one right here. So instead of a closed circle here, what's it gonna be? It's gonna be open because at one, do you see it? If I put in, yeah, if I put in a one in for x, what's one plus one? It's two, one, two, right? But why is it open? Because this is just less than, it's not or equal to. So that's how we know that that's open. Everybody with me on that? All right, I'm not even gonna use that point right there. I mean, it'll go through it, but you'll see. Let's put in negative two. So if I go to negative two on the x-axis, if you want, just put in negative two in for this x. What's negative two plus one? Nobody's talking to me today? Everybody's sleeping after the quiz? Um, what's negative two plus one? It's negative one. So when x is negative two, then y is what? Negative one. Do I, is it open or closed? It's closed because it's or equal to. All right, now what do I do in between? Just make a line, yeah. Or it's a line segment tech, technically, all right? So that's what that part would look like. That's what the orange part would look like. Make sense? Okay, let's do the uh, yellow one. Negative x plus four. Well, if you wanted to, it might be easier just taking these endpoints and plugging it in and see what we get. So stick a one in for the x because it could equal one, right? So put a one in for that. So that's negative one plus four is what? Three, so my point is what? One, three. So one, one, two, three. And it's closed, all right? It's closed because it's or equal to. Let's put a four in for this. Negative, so put a four in for that, it makes it negative four plus four is what? Zero, one, two, three, four, zero, right there. And then what do we do to those two? Yeah, just connect them, line segment. And then that's what our graph should look like. So that's the graphing part, but they ask for more than that. What do they ask for? Find the domain and range, okay? So find, you have a question? Just stretching? Yeah. Okay. Find the domain and range. All right, if we wanna get real fancy, how do, we, how do we write that? Put the little brace thing and then put X such that and now we can say it. So where's the domain? It goes, we're looking at the x-axis, okay? A lot of people got heads down, probably not a best idea in the world, all right? But, you know, it's your choice. Your body, your choice, you know what they say? <laughs> all right, it's your grade, your choice. We'll change it, all right? Um, so where are we at here? Negative five? One, two, three, four, five. Yep, from negative five. Now look, so we're going this way. Is there a gap? Well, there's a gap here, but this kind of fills in the gap, doesn't it? This one right here. And then it goes all the way to here, but there is a gap here, but again, the one above it fills in that gap. And then it goes all the way to what? Four. So this domain goes all the way from negative five to four. And it includes both the endpoints, doesn't it? All right, so what's this gonna be? Less than or equal to, okay? Does that make sense? Yeah, it's not so bad, is it? Once you understand what it's talking about along the x-axis, what are all the values that are valid numbers for the x-axis? Is this number right there valid? No, because it's not included in, in any of these graphs, okay? All right, let's do the range. Again, we'll do this set notation thing or whatever they call it, function notation. I don't know what the actual name of it is. So what are you gonna put? Y is between what and what? So this is a little bit different. Um, there is a gap in the Y's, isn't there? Because if you go down here, how far down on the Y axis can you go and still be included in one of these three graphs? Down to negative three, okay? But there's a gap in between. So I, I'm not going from negative three all the way up here to positive three, am I? I got a gap, so I gotta show that. So um, 
what I could do, let's just do this. So we say, uh, what do they say? They just say y equals negative three. Now I can say or equal, even though that's open right there, the y values everywhere else, it, it actually includes it, doesn't it? So I'm, I can include that. So I can say y equals negative three. But now we gotta jump up, don't we? So let's take a look at the y values here. So we have a y value at negative one, right? And then it keeps on going up. But it looks like there's a gap here though, right? But it looks like it jumps here, but look at all this stuff right there. You see it? That's taken up that empty space. So that's still included in our range. So that's a little bit, you know, that could look a little bit weird, um, or it could be a little tricky for you. But even though there's a gap, uh, it's open here, and then there's that gap in between here and here, but this part of it, that has Y values attached to it, doesn't it? So really, what are we doing? We're going from where? From negative one all the way up to three, all right? So I'll just put a comma and then put a Y here. Is it or equal on both of them? Yeah, it is. So it's or equal. I go from negative one to positive three, and then that is my range, all right? So again, you got that gap right in here, okay? So none of these values, anything between what? Negative three and negative one, right? It's not gonna, it's not gonna work. Make sense? Yeah, it's not so bad. Um, what's that? Yeah, we only have three minutes. Um, on the next one, they actually give you the graph and you have to write this stuff. We kind of did that yesterday though, didn't we? We didn't? I thought we did. Is it different? Oh, okay, yeah, we just had to, yeah, yesterday we just had to state the domain of range. But this time, we have to, we gotta say f equal, or f of x equals negative three right here. So you gotta look at it. So I don't have time to write the other one. Maybe tomorrow we will, but what if you went backwards? What if you didn't know all this stuff right here and you were given the graph and you had to write all this stuff? How would you do that? Well, look at it. What's the slope? Let's write the equation of this line. Okay. So that means this is going to be what? Y equals what? Negative three, correct? But then it's got some restrictions though, doesn't it? All right, so what's my domain? My domain goes from where? Negative five to negative two, but it's not included. The negative two is not included, right? Do you see how to get from here to here? All right, what about the orange one? All right, it says, well, again, we don't know this, but look at this. We could just use the two points, that's what I would do. Okay, if I was to do this, so what's this point right here? Negative two, negative one, correct? And what's this point up here? One, two, and then I could write the equation of the line given two points, right? Find the slope, or since it's on graph, all right, since it's on graph paper, and you can kind of see where the y-intercept is, you might just be able to guess. So what's the y-intercept? right there is at one, so it's gonna be plus one, and then so y equals m, what's the m? Just count, one, two, three, one, two, three, up to the right, that's both one, so it's one x, there it is, okay? If you wanted to put the two points in here and put it into like the slope intercept form and all that kind of stuff, that would work as well. Because what if it went like somewhere in between and you didn't know exactly where the y intercept was? You don't wanna guess. All right, so that's what I would do. And the same thing here, right? You can't really see where the y-intercept is, so I would take these two points, okay? Figure out what that point is, figure out what that point is, figure out what your equation of a line is, but then you gotta do the restrictions. Then you gotta figure out what the domain and range are, and that would be all this stuff right here, all right? So really, the next example is kind of just like this, except just different graphs, that's all it is. All right, we'll finish it up, hopefully, we're gonna do something you've probably never seen tomorrow, okay? It's called the greatest integer function. You ever hear of that? But you will tomorrow.